Hello, Crafting Cousins. How you doing out there? So, as promised, today I am going to show you all how to epoxy the whipped ice cream tumbler toppers. As you can see, I am wearing my protective gear. I have my mask to protect my lungs, and then I'm going to also wear gloves as well. All right, so let's get to it. I have the epoxy. So normally I would do 10 mLs, meaning five, five part A, I'm oh, sorry, 5 mLs of part A, 5 mLs of part B. However, because I plan on using the remainder of the epoxy to, um, to make some, and I will show you all how to do this, but I plan to use the remainder of the epoxy to make some chocolate drizzle to cover this topper. I poured a little bit extra in here. So here, we're going to be covering this ice cream topper here. I've already done two of them earlier. Sorry if you all can hear me breathing. That's me breathing through this mask. Um, it's not hard to breathe, but you can you can just hear it. All right. So I'm going to stir this up really good. So I don't normally use either a Q-tip or I bought some of these from Amazon, some um, eyeshadow brushes, disposable eyeshadow brushes. All right, so that's messed up pretty good. So I do have a silicone mat that I work on when I'm dealing with epoxy because epoxy never sticks to silicone, so it's fine there. Um, one of the toppers I did today earlier, I put a little bit of glitter in the epoxy because the customer wanted. So just know that you can mix the glitter in here if you choose to. You can even mix um, some acrylic paint if you prefer to change the color of it. So I just here, hold on, hold on, let me get in there. Okay, so you all can see. So I have the epoxy, dip this in here. And just know that when you're dealing with um, the epoxy or when you're epoxying your um, toppers, the reason you're doing that is because if that spackle gets wet, then it's going to, it's going to, um, turn it it's gonna basically melt and look like look like actual ice cream so we definitely don't want that so you want to make sure that you get every bit of spackle covered with epoxy and i'm either going even going to cover my cherry this cherry just to make it a little bit shinier you don't have to but that's just my preference so this topper here is going to go on the top of a um, ice cream tumbler. I hadn't done the tumbler yet. I'm just going to get this over with first. But in preparation for summertime. So all I'm doing here is just brushing the epoxy on top of here. Um, normally when I'm doing the, the whipped cream toppers, then I like to use a Q-tip just to get in between those wedges really well. But it's your preference, of course. Just make sure it's good and shiny. If it's shiny, then you know you got it good. And after I'm complete with these, I usually let them sit for um, about six hours before I remove the tape. Oh, speaking of, so yes, I apply tape on here. First off, I take off the black paint bands that's around the tumblers. So I remove these because I don't want epoxy on those. But I... I tape the lids up with tape so that it creates less of a mess. Like, look here, I just drip um, epoxy on the tape. That's fine. If it was on the lid, then I would have to, of course, go in with acetone and, and, and an exacto knife and remove it, which is no problem. But the less mess equals the less work later on. We just want to get there good because we don't want any part of the speckle to get wet once you send it out to your customer or if you're using it for yourself. You do not want any part of it to get wet because this let it create a mess. We don't want messes. And it's okay for it to get on top of your lid, on top of the plastic part of your lid, on if it's on the top part. Um, that's fine. You can easily clean that off, but we just don't want it to get wet. 
get down to the bottom of it. It's just like I said, it's just less of a mess if it doesn't. Again, I'm sorry if y'all can hear me breathing through this mask, but um, I have to protect myself. So, so yeah, so that comes first. Safety first. And what I love about this mask is because I cannot smell a thing, and I don't want to. Because you can actually have health issues if you're breathing this stuff in. And I know some people, they breathe in with no problem, work with no mask on. I've seen some work with no gloves on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how long, you know, they've done that without it on. I'm not sure, but I like to. And this mask here actually comes with the goggles. I'm just not wearing them right now. Sometimes I do. And I usually do when I'm doing sublimation. I have the goggles on as well because, I don't know, for some reason those fumes... In, at least in my head, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, they may mess with my eyes. Not really, no, but I'm going to be safe and sorry. So as you know, I already have some drip on this topper here. So, um, you know, you don't have to go over the drip because it's already epoxy, right? But I'm just doing it anyway no particular reason behind it, but you don't have to go over the already epoxy area. It's just quicker to, for me at least, it's quicker to go over it again than to avoid it. Because if I'm trying to avoid it and just get in between, so look, here I want to get, even if I have to turn this lid, I want to get and let that drip in there. I want to get in that hole right there. And, you know, don't worry if your epoxy cakes up in a hole or whatever. Hey, that's, hey, it's going to let your topper be great. So don't worry about that. Here as well. I'll just let that drip underneath that cherry there. Because that way I know that if water was to touch this topper, this epoxy is covering it covering the spackle so that water is not going to even touch the spackle, which is what we want. Like I said, I'll let the tape sit on here for six hours, about five to six hours before I remove it. But I don't I don't even mess with the topper until it's cured for 24 hours. 12 hours may be enough time, but I just like to leave it alone for 24 hours. Because after that, then there's really nothing else to do with it except for place it on your tumbler. Or just send it to your customer if your customer only wants the topper. So here's the drinky part where the straw is going to be inserted. So you definitely want to make sure you get in good in there as well. So I'll let this drip. I'm going to go over it with my brush. Then I also... Can you all see? Okay, yeah. So I flip it over, let it drip in the center. And then go back in there with the applicator. Like I said, any part where a spackle is showing, you want to make sure that that's um, covered because it's a possibility that it can get wet. All right. And you know this is going to drip down. Um, after you set it down, after you're finished, and then you set it down, it's going to, of course, drip. That's fine. Because gravity is going to allow this epoxy to just go south. As long as your entire topper is covered as far as the speckle goes, there's no issues. So like I said, what I'm going to do with the remainder of the epoxy is I'm going to pour some chocolate acrylic paint in here. So that would be my chocolate drizzle. And I'm going to let it set for about 45 to 55 minutes just so it can thicken. Because like, like right now, this epoxy is running. So I can't do much with it right now. So I'm going to let it set. For 45 minutes after I stir in the acrylic paint, 
And then I'm gonna come back and get, get back on camera and show you all how I do the chocolate drizzle since I have to be, since I have the um, top that I need to drizzle with anyway. So all that's left now is I'm going to do the cherry. I'm not gonna do the stem, no need to. And this is just optional. I'm just getting a little extra right now. I just like a little bit of shine everywhere. Like even when the candy pieces are on, I always go over the um, candy pieces with the epoxy as well. Just to add that extra layer of shine. Just to make sure I got it in that hole. I'm gonna go back in there again. And everything is good and covered, shiny. So I always just like to do a one over and just take another look at it, make sure I didn't miss any areas. And like I said, sometimes when I'm doing my whip toppers, um, then I do the I use a Q-tip just to make sure I get in between those wedges. I don't have wedges here because it's just scoops of ice cream, so I don't need it. And then, like I said, let it sit for about five or six hours before you remove the tape. And then 24 hours total, at least for me, I do 24 hours total. So let it dry, fully cure, and that's it. You have the tumble toppers. All right. So thank you all, as always, thank you all for taking the time to watch my videos. Um, if you feel like there's anything you would like to show, like for me to show you, or go into more detail on, please feel free to shoot me a message. Um, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you choose. Um, and I'm definitely willing to do a video of your choice um, and answer any questions you may have. So again, thank you all. I love you all, appreciate it. Please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, have a good one. Bye.